Guys, have you ever felt like Java development is just too much setup? Like you spend more time wiring things together than actually building features? Well, you're not alone. And that's exactly where Spring Framework comes in. My name is Daniel, and in this video we're breaking down what Spring is, how it helps you write cleaner and more manageable code, and why Spring Boot makes everything even easier. Guys, make sure you check out all the useful links in the description after watching this video. There might be some nice discounts there. Let's get into it. Ok guys, so what exactly is the Spring Framework? Think of it as a comprehensive toolkit for building Java applications. The core idea behind Spring is something called inversion of control, which sounds fancy but is actually pretty simple. Instead of your code creating and managing all the objects it needs, it does that heavy lifting for you. It's like having a personal assistant who knows exactly what you need and when you need it, my friends. Spring takes care of creating objects, connecting them together and managing their entire life cycle. This approach makes your code cleaner, more testable and easier to maintain. The framework is built around several core principles that make Java development much more pleasant. It promotes a loose coupling, which means your different code components aren't tightly tied together and this, guys, makes your applications more flexible and easier to modify later. It also embraces something called aspect-oriented programming, which lets you handle cross-cutting concerns like logging and security separately from your main business logic. What really sets it apart is its modular design. You don't have to use every single feature that the tech offers. You can pick and choose the parts that make sense for your specific project. So folks, whether you're building a simple web application or a complex enterprise system, Spring has modules that can help. Folks, quick heads up for all my Java devs working with Spring and even OpenJDK, Apache Struts or similar open source projects. So here's a big issue developers run into. What do you do when your apps are running on versions of these projects that have hit end of life? Your apps might still run just fine, but the real danger is that security support is gone for the outdated versions of Spring, OpenJDK or Hibernate, not to mention Apache Tapestry that you are running. And every day the risk gets worse. Now guys, for a lot of teams, upgrading right away isn't an option. You've got outdated dependencies, limited budgets, you know the drill. That's where Endless Lifecycle Support or ELS from Taxcare comes in. Their Endless Lifecycle Support for languages and the runtimes offers an entire suite of long-term security support for outdated languages and runtimes including support for Java-based projects like Spring and OpenJDK, as well as for PHP, Python, and more. They keep sending security patches beyond the end-of-life date, so you can continue using your out-of-support versions. This way, folks, your apps stay protected even if you're not ready to migrate yet. They offer long-term patching for several versions of various languages and runtimes, and it only takes two steps to install. If you're maintaining legacy Spring, or OpenJDK apps, or use other similar open source projects in your Java apps, guys. Definitely check out ELS for languages and runtimes from Taxcare. I'll leave a link below so you can explore your options and stay secure. Huge thanks to Taxcare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to today's topic. Now, my friends, let's break down the core concepts that make Spring tick. The most important concept is called the Spring Container, which is basically the heart of the entire framework. Think of the container as a factory that creates and manages all your application objects. These objects are called beans, and the container is responsible for their entire life cycle. Dependency injection, guys, is another fundamental concept that makes the framework so powerful. Instead of your classes creating their own dependencies, it injects them automatically. Imagine you have a car class that needs an engine. Instead of the car creating its own engine, Spring provides the engine that the car needs. This makes your code much more flexible and testable because you can easily swap out different implementations. Now, folks, configuration in Spring can be done in several ways, but the most modern approach uses annotations. They are like little labels you put on your classes and methods to tell the framework how to handle them. The most common annotation you'll see is component, which tells Spring that a particular class should be managed as a bean. There's also service for business logic classes, repository for data access classes, and controller for web-related classes. The application context is Spring's advanced container that provides additional features beyond basic dependency injection. It handles internationalization, event propagation, and resource loading, among other things. When you guys start a Spring application, the application context boots up and creates all the beans your application needs. Now, guys, let's talk about Spring Boot, which is probably what you'll actually use when building Spring applications. 
It's built on top of the framework, but makes everything much easier to set up and configure. If regular Spring is like building a car from individual parts, Spring Boot is like getting a car that's already assembled and ready to drive. The main advantage of Spring Boot is its auto configuration feature. Folks, it looks at your project dependencies and automatically configures the framework based on what it finds. If you include a database dependency, it automatically sets up database connectivity. If you include web dependencies, it sets up a web server. This eliminates hours of manual configuration that used to be required with traditional Spring applications. Spring Boot also includes an embedded web server, typically Tomcat, right out of the box. Guys, this means you can run your web applications without having to install and configure a separate server. You just run your application and it starts up with everything you need. This makes development and deployment much simpler. Another great feature of the tech is its starter dependencies. And folks, these are pre-configured dependency bundles that include everything you need for specific types of applications. Want to build a web application? Add the Spring Boot Starter web dependency. Need database access? Add Spring Boot Starter Data JPA. These starters take the guesswork out of choosing compatible dependencies. Guys, before we move on, I try to make my content fun instead of boring. And in return, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy the content I make. All right, folks, let's walk through creating your first Spring Boot application step by step. The easiest way to get started is by using Spring Initializer, which is a web-based tool for generating projects. You can find it on Spring Initializer page, and it lets you choose your project settings, dependencies, and build system. Select Maven or Gradle as your build tool, choose Java as your language, and pick the latest stable version of Spring Boot. For your first project, guys, I'd recommend starting with the Spring Web Starter dependency. This gives you everything you need to build a simple web application. Once you generate and download your project, you can open it in any IDE that supports Java development. Your main application class will be annotated with Spring Boot application, which combines several annotations into one convenient package. Folks, this annotation tells Spring Boot to enable auto configuration, component scanning, and configuration properties. The main method in this class is where your application starts, and it calls Spring Application Run to boot up the entire framework. Creating your first REST endpoint is surprisingly simple. Create a new class, annotate it with REST controller, and add methods annotated with get mapping, post mapping, or other HTTP method annotations. Spring Boot handles all the underlying HTTP processing, JSON serialization, and response generation automatically. You guys just focus on writing your business logic. Dependency injection is a key idea in Spring, so let's simplify it, guys. Say you're building an e-commerce app that sends email notifications. Without dependency injection, your order service would directly create and manage the email service, which tightly connects the two and makes the code harder to manage. With Spring, you define the email service separately, and the framework automatically gives it to the order service when needed. You usually use the auto-wired annotation for this, folks. It makes your code easier to test and more flexible. There are a few ways to inject dependencies. Constructor injection is usually best, while field and setter injection are also options depending on your needs. Spring also lets you control how often a bean is created, like once for the whole app or a new one each time it's used. Testing is super important, my friends, and Spring makes it easy. Thanks to dependency injection, you can mock parts of your app and test your code without needing the whole system to run. The framework's testing tools let you test small parts, like individual classes or the entire app if needed. Guys, with annotations like Mockbean and Spring Boot Test, you can quickly set up tests for different layers, like controllers or databases. Spring Boot even includes things like an in-memory database and web server, so your tests feel close to real-world conditions without needing extra setup. So, my friends, once you've got the basics of Spring down, you can go deeper by exploring things like Spring Security for app protection or Spring Cloud for building microservices. The official docs and guides on the official website are super helpful with step-by-step -step tutorials. The best way to learn is by building, guys. Start with simple apps and slowly make them more complex. Add a database, build a REST API, then layer on security and testing. If you prefer structure, try online courses or books. And don't be shy, jump into the community, ask questions and learn from others. All right, guys, that's a wrap on our intro to Spring and Spring Boot. If you've ever felt like Java was just too much boilerplate and not enough fun, Spring really changes the game. It helps you write cleaner, more flexible code 
without drowning in configuration files. Honestly, folks, if you're a Java dev and you haven't tried Spring yet, give it a shot. You'll be surprised how much easier and more enjoyable it makes your workflow. So now I want to hear from you. Have you used Spring before? Are you just getting started? Drop your thoughts, questions, or even struggles down in the comments. I read everything and I'd love to help out if I can. Feel free to check out the links in the description below. You might find some discounts there. As usual, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, until next time.